Hi all, this is Skates, and with update 6.0 upon us, I wanted to get a video out on the Sherman Firefly. Obviously it's where the new line is going to be starting, so we're probably going to see more and more of these on the battlefield. Now in real life, the Sherman Firefly was a bit of a monster. The short rundown is Americans give M4 Shermans to Brits, if Brits don't have their own real tank at that point in time capable of dealing with things like Tigers, so stopgap solution, take said hull, take said tank, put better British gun in it. Now there was things like the British Cruiser, the British Cromwell, but they were not capable of dealing with Panthers or dealing with Tigers. So take one of these, stick a 17 pounder in it, which for a tank this size was a massive gun. And it became very, very cramped inside the terrace. And it was capable of nearly every single time penetrating a tiger or a panther. Which is why you'll see in real life a lot of them had the front half of the guns painted. The camouflage. The reason being is because they tried to hide the fact it was a firefly. Because if the Germans saw a firefly, they would target it before any of the other Shermans. Because they knew the gun was capable enough. So in real life... Brilliant concept. In Blitz, it kind of works to its disadvantage because a massive gun in a small tank means sod all gun depression. That's a bad thing in Blitz, especially for the Sherman. I think for any of the Shermans in Blitz, one of the best assets they have is their gun depression. And the Firefly, if you're used to driving any of the other Shermans, is something that will severely catch you out. Because, as a comparative, the Easy 8 Sherman, or the Fury, if you've got either one of them, will have 12 degrees of gun depression. This one has 6. And that is a huge game changer. In fact, that completely alters the playstyle. The Sherman is not an armoured tank, and one thing I personally loved about the American line, the American medium line rather, is that what you learnt in the M4A3E8 Sherman is to use the gun depression, and using the gun depression allows you to hide that very weak tank. Now that's an asset you need up the entire American line. Once you master the E8 and you learn to control that tank perfectly, you can drive the entire line. Sadly, I genuinely think this is where the Sherman falls down. I don't think it's a bad tank, but I think compared to something like an Easy 8, the Easy 8 wins every day of the week just because of that double gun depression value. What you gain from the Firefly, I don't think offsets what you lose. I mean, it's the first comparative. I'm not even bothering to compare something like a Cromwell B because the Cromwell will stuff the Firefly, which is why we've also gone with the Easy 8. I mean, what you're paying for, basically, with the lack of gun depression, is a very high penetration gun at tier 6. 171mm in comparison to 128mm of penetration on the Easy 8. You're also getting better accuracy on the Firefly, better shell velocity, and better aim time. In other words, the gun is just better all round, except it has very slightly less DPM. I've banged on about this for a while in this video now, and I, it's probably because I can't hit this home enough. The biggest strangling point, the biggest restriction on this tank is its lack of gun depression, and I don't think that wonderful gun makes up for what you lose. Because the hull on this thing is god-awful. 51 on the front, 38 on the sides, 38 on the rear. The turret, 64 on the front, 51 on the sides, and 51 on the rear. That makes it a very vulnerable tank, and without the gun depression, which the other ones have to allow them to hide the hull, makes the playstyle awkward. I say awkward, it just makes it a little bit more difficult than you would expect from one of the other ones. And I honestly think that is one of the best assets in the arsenal of the Sherman, is its gun depression. In this, the best recommendation I would personally make is to take advantage of the gun by playing longer range. Playing longer range, always having hard cover in front of you, and basically just playing long range peek boom gives you an advantage back in this tank because you don't have the gun depression to survive. What you do have is a very accurate gun with good penetration. So over long ranges, 
you don't suffer from a drop in penetration value, or you don't suffer as badly anyway. And that is literally how I have played this tank. If I am the center of attention, if I am being focused, I'm not popping my tank out in any shape or form, I will relocate. And it is literally a rinse and repeat of that. You pop your nose out as much as you can, you take your shots off, and you get back into cover. If someone's pointing their gun at you, don't stick your face out. Or if you're going to, make it a snappy shot. And then back into cover, and then back out of cover, and then back into cover. It's the only way in this tank. You cannot rely on angling. You're definitely not going to out DPM anything. So the game is basically pop and run. Relocate. I'm going to get shot to hell and back in the butt now, but I need to get away from that spot so I can pop and cover. What I've basically done is while they are being focused over there, I've kind of tried to create a pincer movement which allowed me to come across to this spot, get some cover on my side, pop off shots while all the enemy tanks are distracted. It's horrible to a degree, and it is kind of being a team player, but to the same extent, you're basically using other team players as bait while you're trying to play a long range game and trying to provide them as much support fire as you can. Which, coincidentally, is kind of a handy skill to learn at this stage because you need this skill for the next tank. The next tank is very much a lightly armoured tank destroyer medium tank. And although the Sherman Firefly is categorised as a medium tank, you've got to think about it like a turreted TD, like the rest of the line which is going to follow. And as soon as you do, and you think of it like that, you'll start to perform a bit better in it. You will get occasional random bounces from the turret, but they are going to be very, very rare. And to clarify, just because I said treat it like it's a tank destroyer because it's got that amazing gun and poor hull, does not mean sit at the back in camp. You've still got brilliant mobility, which basically means you cannot be the centre of attention. You have to treat yourself solely as something there to provide support fire. And then you can do exactly the same with the tier 7, which will follow this tank. It's like this game here. We ended up in a 1 versus 3, but we had the range and the hit points left because we acted as support fire. So although we still did damage before the rest of our team went and we still helped the team, we survived because we kept those hit points. And that's not too dissimilar to a lot of lightly armoured tank destroyers. You can roll, I mean Hellcat, you can roll with medium tanks, but you're not going to go running and gunning in front of them. If you do, you're playing it wrong. It's a support medium, and you have to play it as such. I hope some of the information in this video is of use to some of the people who potentially may be struggling in this tank. And it's a bit of a shame in my opinion, because the Sherman Firefly, like I said, is a bit of an icon in real life. In Blitz, it's kind of a little bit of a letdown. Then again, not too similar to the Tiger in that regard. Although the Tiger will always have a place in my garage, the Firefly, I cannot say the same. There are many different variants of the Sherman which print more money and have a more enjoyable playstyle because of that gun depression. So yeah, there we go, Sherman Firefly. I cannot wait for the line to follow this. I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.